Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking for integer solutions for an equation given in two variables. In other words, we're going to be solving or we're going to look for solutions for a Diophantine equation in two variables. So x and y are integers and we are looking for a solution to this equation. This equation or this problem was taken from a book called 1001 Problems in Classical Number Theory. It's a really good book if you're interested in number theory. I will share the link down below. And also as promised, I'm going to be sharing with you a related problem or a variant of this problem, which is also very interesting. So let's get started. We have 117y to the third power minus x to the third power equals 5 and x and y are integers. So what am I going to do? I'm going to be presenting two methods here. So let's start with the first method. So with these kinds of equations, a lot of times we use modular arithmetic. And there's also a video that I made about modular arithmetic. Actually, I didn't make a lecture notes video. I was planning to make one. But I think that we made some videos on modular arithmetic as well. If I, forget, if I don't forget, I will share the links as well. So you can remind me if I don't. So first method basically involves the following. I'm going to be looking at this expression in mod 3. Why? because mod 3 is kind of cool. You can also look at it mod 2, mod 5. doesn't really matter, but you have to pick a prime mod. But I pick mod 3, and you'll see in a little bit why. So if you look at this equation mod 3, first of all, notice that 117, because 1 plus 1 plus 7 is equal to 9, 117 is divisible by 3. So mod 3, 117 is going to be 0, leaving us with negative x cubed. And that's going to be congruent to 2 mod 3 because 5 is congruent to 2 mod 3. Great. Now we can definitely multiply both sides by negative 1 because multiplication is allowed. Division is kind of tricky. So we can write this as x cubed is congruent to or equivalent to mod um, x cubed is congruent to negative 2 mod 3. And since you add um, negative 2 basically means 1. So you can write it as x cubed is congruent to 1 mod 3. So we're kind of looking at a number whose cube is congruent to 1 mod 3. So what kind of number are we looking at? Well, mod 3, we only have like three numbers in terms of remainders. We have a number that is 0 mod 3, which is multiples of 3, or something that leaves a remainder of 1, or something that leaves a remainder of 2. When you cube these numbers mod 3, you're going to get the following. 0 is going to be 0, 1 is going to be 1, and 2 is going to be 8, but 8 is 2 mod 3. So everything basically will be preserved. In other words, we can safely say that x cubed is always congruent to x mod 3. Since we have an equation that is congruent to 1, x cubed is congruent to 1 mod 3 implies x is congruent to 1 mod 3. Great. And this we can write this as an equation, not a congruent statement. So we can write it like x equals 3k plus 1, where k is an integer. z represents the set of integers in this case. So x can be written like that because it leaves a remainder of 1 upon division by 3. And what I can do is my favorite method, substitution. Yay. So let's go ahead and use substitution here. Substitution works like the following. Our original problem, remember, was 117y cubed minus x cubed equals 5. I'm going to now replace x with 3k plus 1. And of course, I have to cube it and then simplify this. I simplify this expression, 117y to the third power minus 27k to the third minus 27k squared just by using the binomial theorem on the cube. You can just write it like this, minus 9k minus 1 is equal to 5. And from here, you're going to get, um, if you simplify this a little bit more, uh, you should be getting something like this. You know, uh, you can leave the 6 on the other side, so kind of like add 1 to both sides and leave it like that. Now, notice that everything um, is divisible by 3, so you can kind of uh, divide everything by 3. That's going to give you 39y cubed minus 9k cubed minus 9k squared minus 3k is equal to 2. At this point, you can use the modular arithmetic arguments or, or also you can just take out a 3 here because the left-hand side is still divisible by 3, which actually meant that both uh, the left-hand side was already divisible by 9 
but I didn't take out a nine because six um, is not divisible by nine. That's why I kind of took like two steps here. Uh, some people may find this unnecessary, but you know, I just did it, too bad. Okay, minus three k squared minus k is equal to two. Now we get a contradiction here, why? Because on the left-hand side, we have a multiple of three, but on the right-hand side, we get two, which is not a multiple of three. So this equation is impossible if uh, y and k are integers. Now let's take a look at it. Remember we said that k is an integer. Of course, x and y are both integers. So this is not gonna work. We have a contradiction. Therefore, there are no solutions according to the first method. Let's see if the second method gives us the same thing. And what do you expect, right? Okay, let's continue. Second method is going to use a slightly different approach and it's kind of fun. I know we're kind of beating around the bush or maybe, what is it called? Um, beating a dead horse, uh, but it's kind of fine. Uh, it's kind of interesting to look at it from different perspectives. Anyways, I talk too much. I'm gonna use, um, what am I gonna use? Mod nine, okay, great. Why mod 9? Because 117 is divisible by 9. So notice that 117 is 0 mod 9. I'm being more descriptive here. And then um, since this is 0 mod 9, we're going to get negative x cubed is equal to 5 mod 9. From here, we get x cubed is congruent to 5. I mean, I said is, but it means congruent. Get the idea. x cubed is congruent to negative 5. And negative 5 basically means 4 mod 9 because you can just add nine. Nine means zero in mod nine, right? Okay. So I do have something when cubed gives us four. Is that possible? Well, you might be thinking like, I don't have the cube root of four, but remember this is mod nine. So you have to be very careful. I'm going to make a table. And this table is, I think, in and of itself is kind of interesting uh, because uh, I don't know, it's interesting. I find it interesting at least, right? Okay. So we're gonna be looking at uh, a mod nine table. All right, so it's gonna look like this. And uh, I'm gonna list uh, x and x cubed. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write all the numbers in mod nine and cube them and then look at their cubes. So one, two, th okay, let's just get started and then we could probably add a little bit uh, more rows onto it. This, pro this is probably gonna be good enough. But anyways, so I'll start with zero. If x is zero, then x cubed is gonna be zero mod nine. If x is one, it's gonna be one. If x is 2. If you cube it, it's going to be 8. If you want, you can write it as negative 1, no big deal. Uh, 3 is going to be 27, right? Because I'm cubing it. 27 is obviously a 0 mod 9, needless to say, right? 4 cubed is going to be 64, and that should be 1 mod 9 because 63 is divisible by 9. 5 is going to be, um, when 5 cubed, 125. I think 125 is, uh, let's see, uh, gives us a remainder of 8 because 1 plus 2 plus 5 is the remainder. And then for 6, obviously, it's going to give us a 0. Uh, 7 cubed is going to be 343, and that is 1 more than a multiple of 9 because 342 is divisible by 9. So that's 1 mod 9. And finally, 8, I don't need 9 because that's 0. So I have an extra row, is also going to be 8. Now, what does this table tell you? This table tells you that when you cube a number in mod 9, it can only be 0, okay, 1 or 8 mod 9. It can't be anything else. Therefore, the, in, the congruent statement x cube is congruent to 4 mod 9 is impossible. You can't have any integer cubed is, um, okay, an integer cubed cannot be 4 mod 9. It's impossible. Therefore, we don't have any solutions to this equation as in the first method. Of course, they should agree with each other, right? This doesn't bring us to the end of the video yet because I, I'm gonna talk to you about an extension. So by the way, uh, we have x cubed minus 117y cubed equals five. So what happens if you kind of flip the roles here and switch these around? In other words, set it equal to negative five instead of positive five. This equation is known to have at most 18 solutions but the exact number is unknown. And this actually brings us to the end of, the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.